for those of you that I haven't had the opportunity to meet, Vincent DeChico, Senior Regional Channel Manager. I've been with Vonage going on two years now, been in the industry for the last eight. Um, all my entire time in the industry has been on the channel side, focused on unified communications and contact center. Um, and I, you know, we've been working a lot together recently. We've seen some, uh, some success. I think we have a lot of momentum. And so thank you for inviting, you know, me and the team on to talk. A, what I want to focus on today is, you know, what does partnering with Vonage look like, but really how are we different in the marketplace compared to some of the other options that are on the line card. And so I'd like to start with just a brief overview. I think everybody um, knows Vonage is kind of the pioneer of residential voiceover IP, if you will. I think at one point we probably all either had or knew somebody uh, with one of those Cisco spa ATAs in their house making you know long distance and international calls uh, at a fraction of the cost. But that was over 20, 21 years ago. So we just recently celebrated our 21st birthday. Um, and about 12 years ago, the organization really made a shift from resident, from a residential organization uh, to create a end-to-end -end enterprise grade communications you know, organization. And through mergers and acquisitions, through internal development and organic growth, we really put together this communication stack that you see on the slide here today. So on the left-hand side, we've got our unified communications. This is your standard back office business power user. Um, on the right-hand side, we have our contact center. So this is your high volume interaction, you know, sales, service, support, uh, lines of business that really need to meet the customer where they want to be met. So whether that is you know, voice, video, like we're using today, um, SMS, web chat, and even recently things like social media are being funneled into contact centers. And then in the middle, this uh, programmable communications component is our API division. And this I like to call more of the art of the possible. So think organizations like Peloton, um, using our video API to deliver the instructor led videos or organizations like Uber, when you're you know, ordering uh, a rideshare app uh, inside of the application, you have the ability to reach out to the driver via phone or via text, but actually mask the DID um, for both parties. And so Uber is leveraging our voice and SMS APIs to deliver those interactions. Um, and another one that, that's really turn the corner from a marketing perspective is Domino's. And so when you order, you know, pizza or food uh, and it's, it's going through that, that journey, they're leveraging our APIs to communicate to the customer where, you know, where their order is at and who's actually making it and then when it's going to be delivered to you. So uh, lots of possibilities there. This is very unique um, in our industry to have a communications provider that owns and operates all three of these core components of their tech stack. Um, of course, we are built, purpose built for the cloud inside of AWS, uh, you know, redundancies upon redundancies and our favorite acronym soup of security protocols are all in there. Um, and then draped over the top, you're going to notice a number of integrations to CRMs as well as business productivity software. So on the left-hand side, we have Salesforce, we've got G Suite, Office 365, Dynamics, ServiceNow, uh, a very popular one since the pandemic, Teams, and then, of course, rounding that out with Slack. Um, what's different about Vonage is you're not going to see hundreds and hundreds of out-of-the-box integrations from us. We've taken a more strategic, deep and wide approach with the integrations that we do provide. So I'll touch on that a little bit more as we go through this. But the differentiators that I want to focus on today come in the form of our CTI integration for Salesforce, as well as our native integration for Microsoft Teams. I like this slide here because it really ties together, um, you know, the marketplace as well as where where when you're out talking to clients, where do you see, you know, uh, a Vonage opportunity? And so we're unique in the sense that we own and operate all three core components of the technology stack. And this is very unique in our marketplace today. So you'll see some of the other suppliers 
Uh, it's very common uh, in our industry to either partner with or white label you know, a unified communications company partnering with and white labeling a contact center or vice versa. And then customers having to go out to organizations like Twilio or Amazon Connect to bring in you know, custom developed solutions. So you've got these siloed um, communication providers really trying to trying to provide the customer with a holistic um, communications approach, but yet different layers of support, different sales teams, different post-sale uh, client success managers supporting that customer. So you can see how things can get a little confusing when they're trying to find you know, an answer to an issue or trying to find the right support team to go to. Um, we're able to provide all three core components as a uh, one-stop shop. And so we've seen you know, positive response from the marketplace. Customers uh, already have enough solutions within their environment. They, uh, they like the fact that they're able to come to us for all three of these core components during not just the sales process, during implementation, and sometimes more importantly, post-sale um, for support. So I want to focus on the Salesforce differentiator. And Vonage is unique in a sense that they went out and acquired an organization or company uh, called New Voice Media. And this was about four or five years ago. And New Voice Media was unique in a sense that they hedged all of their bets on the Salesforce ecosystem. So they actually co-wrote the CTI that all of these other providers that you see here use um, to connect their unified communications and their contact center solutions into Salesforce. Um, but what's unique with Vonage after the acquisition is uh, we were recently rated the, a summit partner, which is the top 1%. And I believe Salesforce has over 1,500 partners. So it's a testament to um, the solution that we've, we've built. Um, over 840 customer reviews, a near-perfect rating in the app exchange. And these are um, you know, customer reviews, not, not Vonage, going out to the market and saying, hey, look at how great we do with Salesforce. And if you look at a lot of these reviews, they're really speaking to our professional services. So at Vonage, anyone who implements a Vonage contact center for Salesforce, whether that's with um, any, any flavor, whether that's service cloud or sales cloud, they are all Salesforce certified. So they go through the exact same training that the Salesforce team does. And because this is where they live and breathe on a daily basis, they're, they're able to offer um, customers with things like best practices when you have a Salesforce environment, typically there's a ton of different custom objects. No one Salesforce instance is the same. And so this team is critical in providing the customer with uh, an exceptional experience and making sure that we're creating the efficiencies uh, and the workflows that we were that, that we positioned you know, in the pre-sales process. So we've got over 1,200 customers globally. Um, I think that number is over 1,300 since this slide was made. You know, 13 plus years integrating to Salesforce and 2.5 billion interactions a year um, powered through our contact center and our unified communication solutions um, running into different organizations' Salesforce environments. So uh, suffice to say, if you have clients that are using Salesforce, uh, the theme that we're seeing the most is customer experience, customer experience, customer experience. Uh, we have a lot of successful deployments and a lot of wins with partners like yourself when their customers are heavily focused on customer experience inside of Salesforce. So please, um, I urge you to think of us. One other thing I want to point out on this bottom left, you're going to see Amazon Connect. So I'm not sure if you ran into a lot of opportunities where Amazon Connect is, um, you know, at the party, so to speak. They are partnered with Salesforce on a go-to-market strategy. They've created a contact center specifically for Salesforce. Um, they do not have a channel program, meaning every one of the customers that decides to go with Amazon Connect is uh, opportunity and revenue that's leaving the channel. Uh, and a lot of times we are not aware and partners are not aware that Amazon Connect is being brought in by Salesforce to speak to their customers. And so if you have, again, if you have Salesforce customers, I urge you to broach this topic with them early and often. Talk to them about how are they leveraging their current unified communications or contact center platform 
to um, you know, drive efficiency through Salesforce? Are they siloed today? Are they looking at integrating? What are the long-term plans for leveraging that Salesforce investment? Now I wanna talk a little bit about how we've segmented the business within Vonage to make it easy for partners like yourself to work with us, to win with us. We have three different segments within the business. So we've got our SMB or our commercial segment. This is gonna be any opportunity where the organization has 149 employees or below. Typically what we're seeing is uh, in this space is unified communications is table stakes. There may be some small form of call center or contact center, whether that's a support team, internal or customer facing or a small sales team, but um, they're really looking for, you know, we've got these hybrid work environments that all organizations are, are dealing with today. So moving legacy premise equipment, you know, they've got remote workers, they've got collaboration needs, they need that video and messaging component. And occasionally, um, you know, they've got some Microsoft Teams in the environment. It's been highly adopted post COVID. And they're looking at, hey, is, do we wanna keep these communication um, application separate or how do we collapse them and make it easier for our staff members to um, be efficient within their workday and then we've got our mid-market this is going to be anywhere from 1500 employees down to 150 again very similar requirements from a UC and CC perspective they've got the remote workforce occasionally we see some international locations they typically have a more complex IVR we see a lot of Microsoft Teams direct routing opportunities in this space. I would say anywhere from six to seven organizations that we're having discussions with, the driving factor is Microsoft Teams and how do they leverage either direct routing or they're weighing the pros and cons of going to Microsoft for their calling plan. Um, they've typically invested in a Salesforce, a Zendesk, a ServiceNow, and they're heavily focused on how do we leverage this investment? How do we bring these communications and make it easier for our agents, our sales folks, our support people to have the information of the caller and create efficiencies within our workflow without having to swivel chair or toggle between multiple applications? And then we've got our enterprise segment. This is going to be anywhere where the organization has 100, or 1,500 employees or more and or 150 contact center seats. So a lot of the same mid-market requirements, except a lot more diverse locations, international, there's a large employee base. They typically have multiple applications they wanna to integrate to. This is where um, we tend to leverage our APIs uh, for some of those more custom development opportunities. Again, MS Teams Direct Routing is uh, very common in the enterprise space. And then things like workforce management and artificial intelligence. And so the benefit to partners of us segmenting out um, these three different markets is that we dedicate specific resources that are gonna make it easier for you to win in these, in this, in these spaces. For example, in SMB, and I know that we've had quite a few opportunities together in this space, our, our SMB AEs uh, have an SLA of an hour or less to provide you a proposal. So we understand um, speed to market, speed to quote is very important in the SMB space. And so we've designed our workflows internally and the resources to be able to execute on that speed to quote. Uh, in the mid-market space, we've got uh, very tenured AEs that work on just mid-market opportunities day in and day out. We have dedicated solutions engineering resources to the mid-market space as well that understand the landscape. They understand all of these different integrations and are able to um, demo and build out custom solutions quickly for those organizations in the mid-market. And then in the enterprise space, again, very similar of dedicated resources, dedicated enterprise account executives. And so the goal with um, with this exercise is to really, again, make it as easy for you as partners to win with us when you have these opportunities. And then there's a lot of dedicated partner resources that having, having worked at other suppliers, I think is um, a lot of value to you as a partner. One of them is gonna be our partner portal. And this really provides you a 360 degree pre and post sales support. Um, and then really having CSMs dedicated to these partners post implementation um, is so that we can increase the focus on cu customer retention 
uh, and ensure that we continue to grow um, you know, your business and your footprint within that organization. Uh, from the top down, we are very much a channel focused organization. I believe today, 80 to 85% of our revenue generation and pipeline comes from the channel. So we have a unique teaming um, structure where all of our account executives are very much focused on partners in the channel. Uh, internally, the channel managers, the account executives, the solutions engineers, and all of the leadership are focused on working with the channel. Um, things like deal registration, you know, provide deal protection for our partners. A lot of times I've seen uh, occurrences where we may have had a lead come in through marketing and then a partner registers that same opportunity. Um, in certain circumstances or with other suppliers, a lot of times the channel is cut out of that opportunity and it's seen as, hey, this was a uh, direct sourced opportunity, whereas here we have a process to actually have the partner tagged and brought into the opportunity because our perspective and our point of view is we want to sell with you. We don't want to sell against you um, because we own the entire technology stack. We're not having to pay a broad soft, uh, you know, or a fill in the blank on the back end. We can get very competitive when it comes to pricing and volume discounts. And I think um, for those of you that have worked with us on opportunities uh, to date, you can you you can realize that we can get very aggressive on our pricing while still including things like free hardware to make it easy for the customer to make the decision to partner with Vonage, all while not affecting um, the workflow or you as the partner. And then unlimited upside potential, the way that our MSA is written is it's, it's evergreen. So we would never move a customer away from you as a partner, whether that customer was to come to us and say, hey, we no longer wanna work or we're no longer working with this agent. Um, the way that we see it is you brought us the opportunity originally and we're going to keep that opportunity with you um, in perpetuity. I want to talk about just two different success stories to really paint the picture around where we're winning with partners today. And this first one is, uh, I'm sure if you saw the brand name, we would all recognize it. They've got commercials everywhere. You can't go on the internet without one of their ads popping up. But it was one of the fastest growing direct sales companies today, revolutionizing, revolutionizing the fashion and retail industries. Their challenge was they needed to replace an on-premise system I was becoming overly expensive. We all know it's very difficult to manage uh, an on-premise system at things like simple things like ads, moves and changes are very tedious. Um, but they had also made a large investment into Salesforce and this legacy PBX system did not have the ability to integrate. So this, uh, I like this opportunity because it was both for the UC side and the contact center side. Um, and so what we did was we came in and we helped them to replace that on-premise system, right? So displace the on-premise system, but where the value was, was we provided them with a UC platform that was flexible. So all of their remote workers now had access to the system. And then we also provided them with that integration to Salesforce. So we were able to, as, as a caller would reach out to the organization, not just do something as simple as a screen pop for their agents, but allow the customer to virtually hear or um, audibly hear their case number or their most recent order number, present them with the question of, are you calling about your recent uh, you know, trousers purchase? Yes, I am, okay, great. And then present that information to the agent. So as they answer, they know, uh, hi, Sergio, I see you're calling about you know, you know your recent trousers purchase. Just want to let you know that we have a delivery date of September 30th. Is that what you're calling about today? So you could see the um, increase in efficiency, but not just in efficiency, but in customer experience as well. And this was a very large opportunity. I think it was over 500 contact center agents uh, and 5,000 UC um, users. So this was a great win for us, great win for the partner, again, leveraging uh, our differentiators, which is the ability to integrate into Salesforce. And I like to point out that this wasn't just for the contact center agents, but it was also for the unified communications uh, users being able to have that integration into Salesforce. So that remote um, sales team, as they're out on the road, as they're meeting with um, you know, their regional distributors, 
they were able to log calls automatically, log tasks and follow up automatically right out of our UC mobile client. And the next one uh, is, is an interesting one. This was for a multinational chain of coffee houses. Uh, I don't think you could drive five blocks in any neighborhood and not see one of them on the corner. Um, but they came to us back in, in 2020 and, um, you know, thousands of locations. They had an HQ, um, multiple headquarters. Um, they were leveraging Microsoft Teams and had a legacy system that was not integrated. They came to us and said, what we're looking for is we've had this high adoption rate internally of Microsoft Teams. We've got retail locations where there isn't necessarily Teams users, but we need to have them connected into a single a single system. And so we were able to do a POC for, I believe it was two or 300 retail locations, or I'm sorry, 30 pilot sites initially. Then we rolled out to two or 300. Um, that went wildly successful and ultimately we were able to win the business of over 15,000 unified communication seats spread across thousands of retail locations um, with Microsoft Teams direct routing for the um, users that required it, majority of which were at the headquarters, and then of course their enterprise team as well. And that kind of segues right into Microsoft Teams direct routing. I think we're seeing it more and more again, six to seven customers, not only in the SMB space, but all the way up to enterprise are, um, this is really the driver when we're starting initial conversations. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about how we differentiate when it comes to Teams direct routing. Then I also brought on Michael Sataki, our solutions architect. So I want him to do a quick demo so you can actually see it in action. But really the challenge is, you know, COVID accelerated the adoption of Teams, the, um, Communication system is still siloed. They may have Microsoft Teams video conferencing internally. Then they have a legacy PBX for calling externally. Um, nothing is connected, again, all siloed. But then there's a lot of other applications as well. They've got SMS and MMS, which may be third party or it may be included in their um, you know, premise or unified communication system. They've got a CRM that again is siloed, so that information is not connected into Microsoft Teams. And then lastly, there's possibly a contact center, which could be an additional supplier that's um, supporting the contact center. So the goal in, in these discoveries and these exercises, how do we collapse all of these different applications um, and bring them into Microsoft Teams? So we have a very strong native integration to Microsoft Teams through our direct routing. And the goal is that you do not, as a staff member, you would never know that Vonage is powering it on the background, uh, in the background. Things like uh, clicking on the phone icon in the left menu, you know, seeing an embedded soft phone and dialer, clicking, you know, click to dial to reach out, not just internally, but externally. And then, Things like presence across the entire organization. So being able to see who is available, who is not. You don't want to do those blind transfers or those warm transfers um, without providing the caller with a great experience. And then there's additional functionality that Microsoft Teams calling plans lack, right? I think anybody that's had Teams for some time now has probably experienced at least one or two outages. So redundancy is also something that's important, but they just don't have the ability to support SMS or MMS. And a lot of organizations, this is a requirement now, customers like us, consumers like us, we wanna be able to communicate with organizations that we do business with um, in our preferred organ, you know, communication method. And a lot of times that's SMS and MMS. Our direct routing has the ability to provide um, this feature right within Microsoft Teams. So this is a competitive differentiator for us. And then there's additional features such as, you know, having the soft phone calling capability for your Microsoft Teams remote users, um, presence inside of Microsoft Teams, call control, call history, you know, voicemail and voicemail transcription, and then an administrative portal that makes it easy for, um, the folks within the organization that have to support uh, this communications platform. So with that being said, I'd like to pass it over to Michael Sataki to 
talk about this slide here and speak to the redundancy piece, but also how, what's unique about Vonage for Microsoft Teams direct routing? And, you know, how do we become, you know, essentially the brains of the communication and provide that customer with the experience that they're looking for? Yeah, absolutely. So thanks, Vince. Uh, so from this diagram, right, um, it's kind of somewhat technical uh, to, to, to show you this. Uh, but you can see on the left-hand side there, incoming and outgoing calls to the PSTN or to the phone system go into the Vonage core in the cloud. And as um, Vince had mentioned, that that's, that's in the cloud and AWS and all of that. And so we're able to take and make those calls um, out the PSTN. That also includes the SMS and it can include fax as well. And so we're taking those DIDs and uh, landing them on our phone system. And then we have the session border controllers on the back end, just basically a server-to-server -server integration going towards Microsoft Teams, that's that top right side. And uh, so we have that connectivity there with them on the back side, the server side. And again, the, the idea here is that we make that connection on the back end, on the server end, so that from the user's perspective, they really don't need to know, nor could need the care that Vonage is actually running the PSTN on the back end. Uh, it's really just an endpoint from our perspective, and it, from their perspective, it's really just living and breathing inside of Microsoft Teams. Uh, you can also see on the bottom right side that uh, our, because we're still taking care of that phone call on the Vonage phone system, you can continue to use the Vonage proprietary application. You can use the Vonage mobile application if you want, or you can even use a desk phone because all of those are still registering to the same phone system, which has the same uh, phone numbers and DIDs in connection to the PSTN as well. As so that comes into uh, into play, especially if Microsoft Teams does have an outage uh, and you can't get to the Microsoft Teams application, uh, when it's a non-real-time thing like chat or just kind of team messaging or checking your calendar or doing something on SharePoint, then eh, not that big a deal. But if it's a phone call, that is a huge deal. And so because all of our endpoints can still continue to register, if they had a hard phone with them, a desk phone, then they can continue to make and take calls. In addition to that, you can see on the bottom right corner, the far right corner, we have a call continuity service. So the idea there is if our phone system can't reach any endpoint for that person, then we can do a phone call out uh, to another number, for example, like a cell phone number or you know some, some other phone number that's been defined as well. And so that's really what this is all about. Um, it makes it so that uh, even though Teams um, may be down, uh, your telephony services are still up and running. So there we have that. Vince, I think I'm going to take over the share and just show. Michael, re really quick, I, and I appreciate that. Sergio, I know we're coming up on time here, that, uh, that 30 minutes. I just want to do a quick check-in with you to see uh, I'd like to save time for Q&A, but again, um, right here at, at the uh, at the time. Uh, Vince, I think we can push another 15 minutes um, that we've allocated, so uh, I think we're okay. Awesome. Okay, excellent. Appreciate it. Back to you, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. So my demo is actually pretty quick. Uh, this is really just to give you a taste. Uh, I, to introduce myself, uh, I am Michael Sataki. I'm a solutions architect here at Vonage. And uh, so if you were ever to work with, say, the mid-market team, uh, then I might be the engineer that's supporting you uh, for this, right? And so I'd be doing the one doing demos like this one to your customers um, and uh, doing that, whether that's to the end user side of this, the admin portal, portal of this, if it was not a Teams opportunity, then, you know, the Vonage side, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I'd be uh, there for this. You should be able to see my screen now. And on the left hand three quarters of my screen over here is the desktop version of Teams. I'm using the web app just so I can share it on the same screen as the right hand quarter of my screen, which is my cell phone. This is just literally just my cell phone that's USB tethered to my computer so I can show it to you at the same time. You can see here that the interface is the exact same interface as Teams. Um, and so it's the chat, you know, any of the chats that you have internally, then you'd have that here. You'd have any teams available here. You'd have your calendar associated here as well. Maybe any SharePoint or OneDrive files that are connected. So this is just the standard teams. Again, from the end user's perspective, they don't have to know, nor should they have to care that Vonage is running all of the phone system capabilities on the back end. 
Again, those calls come into and out of the PSTN to the Vonage side. We do all the call routing, all of the call control, all that. Uh, decide maybe we have to blast ring a bunch of people or sequentially ring some people or get to this particular extension, et cetera. Once that's de decided, then it gets presented to the Microsoft Teams user interface here for that end user to be able to answer that call. And that is driven by this little icon here. Some customers already have this icon. If they do, uh, but they don't have a calling plan or don't have somebody else doing the direct routing, often this is calling for internal calling only. Um, and so some of this layout would be new for them. If they have E5 already, for example, then maybe they already have this uh, icon here and are able to make some calls via some kind of a calling plan uh, that Microsoft is providing for them. But we would be replacing all of that and providing uh, the connectivity that sits behind all of this. The user interface, still Microsoft Teams. We aren't sideloading. We aren't, you know, running Vonage, uh, you know, the Vonage app headless in the background underneath something. No, this is all within the Teams user interface. Uh, nowhere here, you'd be actually hard pressed to find anywhere here where it says the word Vonage. Here is that number pad. So if they needed to hit buttons here to get there, here's my DID, again, that phone number. That phone number resides on the Vonage phone system. You have your call history, of course. You have any speed dials, and you can add more people to that speed dial via the Active Directory uh, that's connected to Microsoft Teams. So that's using that interface yet again, any other contacts as well. In addition to that, they can change things like forwarding capabilities. And again, this is all within the Microsoft Teams UI. So I don't forward my calls, or I forward my calls to voicemail, forward to Joe Smith. I can even go to more settings, and I can do like a find me, follow me type scenario where I'm going to also ring another number, et cetera, as we go. If you noticed when I hit that button, again, not side loading bondage on the side, it's within the Microsoft Teams UI. So let me go ahead and, oh, and I forgot to mention that on the mobile side as well, same thing, All right? I'm going to go back out. Now I have a little calls icon. I can hit that. I can get to my speed dials here. I can get to any of my call history here, and I can click on this button and get to my number pad as well. So I'm able to do all of that. So let me go ahead and launch a call in just so you can see what that looks like. What you'll notice is that the Toast pop-up is the Microsoft Teams native Toast pop-up for this. I'm gonna answer the call. You'll also notice that once I've answered the call, again, not side loading, not you know underneath the hood kind of a thing doing Vonage, it's all in the back end. So the end user doesn't need to know nor care that uh, Vonage is running this in the back end. I'm hitting all these buttons just like I would if I was on Microsoft Teams because it is the Microsoft Teams user interface. If I want to do more actions, I can do like holds, transfers, you know, warm or consultative transfers. I can even turn on live captions. I can even start recording. And for anybody who does live and breathe inside of Microsoft Teams, this people uh, tab should be very familiar. If I wanted to go ahead and add somebody, I could go ahead and add that person in, and this would just elevate this from a Vonage phone call into a Microsoft Teams meeting. And so the idea here is they've already invested in Teams in some way, uh, whether that's just in training and time, uh, that might be the only way that they've actually invested in it. But now we can continue to leverage that investment and not have to train people on a completely different UI specifically just to make, phone, make and take phone calls. The other part that I wanted to point out, uh, you know, I've been saying over and over that Vonage really isn't showing here on the screen. There's one exception to that, and that's for stuff where uh, Microsoft Teams UI doesn't have uh, the capabilities. And Vince has already kind of done the entree into this, which is for text messaging or SMS and MMS. And so you have the ability to do text messaging, SMS, MMS. And this is where we finally add one little V for Vonage here. And this would make it so that we can actually have an interface for us to have uh, texting capabilities. And this is full on texting, right? So this is um, text, emojis, pictures, GIFs, GIFs, video even, and it's all synchronized whether or not you are on your desktop side or on your mobile side. So this would be the one time, again, that you see that V for Vonage, and this makes us sit there. Now their DID is textable as well. Again, we can add other features like fax as well, and that would just make it so that the fax then goes to email. It would make my DID a faxable number at that point. So really, that's all I had to uh, demo for you today. 
Um, obviously, if we were talking with a customer, we would talk a little bit more about what's their use case, how do they, you know, what is their licensing structure on Microsoft Teams. We would talk about what are they trying to accomplish, what are things that are pain points for them, and then even dive into the admin side if we're talking to the IT folks as well. So 